Hey everyone, Shabby Gaming here, and welcome to episode number 100. I can't even believe we made it to episode number 100 of the Gibraltar Challenge on Football Manager 2016. Now, of course, if you've not seen our last episode, then definitely go back and check it out. It was an absolute... It was a, such an important episode in this playthrough. Not only, as you can see, did we get a home draw against Bayern Munich, which got us about 400 grand that did as well, but we became the Gibraltar manager as well as Europa Point. So now we have club and country. This playthrough is really starting to uh, starting to really get to the engine room now. Um, Gibraltar as a country haven't got any games for quite some time. The European Championship qualifiers have just finished. I think probably this time next year we'll have some World Cup qualifiers. But we'll try and book ourselves some friendlies as well. Just to try and uh, boost ourselves up the national rankings. But of course we do have two episodes for you in this two episodes. We have two matches for you in this episode. First away at Olympique and then away at Valencia in the Champions League. Last match of the group stage. Both ourselves and Valencia are on two points. So if we can beat Valencia we will go through to the Europa League knockout stage. But that's a big if. But let's get into that first game against Olympique and hopefully start things off in a winning way. And here we go. We are 3-1 to one to win this one. Or 1-3 one should I say. They are 7-1. to one. So we are of course big big heavy favourites for this one. Anyone of any interest in their team? No. Well, there might be soon because, of course, we are the Gibraltar manager. Now, we have to get to, we have to start getting used to who these players are. But our team, now that we are the Gibraltar manager, I want to make sure that we do play some of these Gibraltarian players and keep them all happy anyway. So, in goal, we have got Musa Badji, who's not Gibraltarian. Don't worry about that. He's from Senegal. He's got 23 caps for them. At left back, we have Jose Ramon Gallardo. In the centre-back positions, we have... Juan Carlos Dolce, who is less than a year away now, is 205 days away. So hopefully by the end of the season or beginning of the next season, he will be eligible to play for our national side. Alongside him will, of course, be Jim Morrison, who has three caps now for Gibraltar. The uh, Englishman um, has been with us now for five years, played for Gibraltar. A couple of episodes ago, we watched his first three games, actually. It was actually the last three games of that manager's reign. And he's going to be a big man for us going forward in the future of Gibraltar, I think. Um, at right back we're playing Ashley Riley, a man who's got 44 caps for the national side and a man who I actually like but we're going to have to try and make sure that he is the best right back around, I'm not 100% sure on that one. A man who will definitely be getting a lot of caps for us though is Frank Evans, central midfield maestro that is Frank Evans. Alongside him we have Khaled Masadi. The three attacking central midfield roles we do have Adama Jeje, who's actually been a very good player for us over the last uh, season or two. And um, we've got Christian Baez, who's unhappy about not playing a lot of first-team football. I think because we've been holding him back for Champions League games, he's been a bit unhappy. Same with Natalio Caballero as well. He's been unhappy because we've been saving him for Champions League games, and he's not actually been playing as many games as we hoped. And up front we have a Maximiliano Bustamante, another man who... I've clicked on the wrong button for. Another man who, by the end of this season, or beginning of next season, will be able to play for the Gibraltar side, and that is a massive one. I'm looking forward to having uh, Bustamante be a great striker for the national side. I think we're going to have a pretty easy job compared to the previous managers because we're going to get the influx of good players coming in soon as well. So let's get this match underway. See if we can get a good result here and obviously move forward into that big game against Valencia. I'm not expecting us to do anything against Valencia. Of course, we're going to be the big underdogs for that one. But at the same time, it would be fantastic if we could pull off a victory and get into the Europa League knockout stage. I don't think it'll happen, but well... Dreams can come true. Why not? But it's been successful. Our third year in a row in being in a major European group stage. Of course, a couple of years ago, we were in the Champions League group stage. Last year, we only qualified for the Europa League group stage. And this year, again, for the Champions League group stage as well. So we really are improving year on year, I think. We're, we're getting... Oh, Buster Mante. How did he get that much power behind a shot? That's incredible. Also, by the end of the season, we should have the we should have the new um, stadium finished. Well, not the new stadium, but the stadium improvements finished. Of course, Olympique are not uh, playing at that stadium at the moment. A few clubs drop down to a different stadium while our one is being improved, and that means our stadium will be able to go up to I think it's five thousand seats, which would be fantastic. That's going to get us a lot more money through gate receipts. I reckon we can actually fill that for a lot of our home games. And of course for European games we're definitely going to fill that. And that's really going to help us out monetary wise as well with our gate receipts. And not just us, other clubs in the country as well. Because I know when the likes of maybe a Glasses United or a Gibraltar United, some of the other bigger clubs in the country, when they 
get themselves a good game. Caballero right in the back of the net. When they get themselves a good game in the uh, Europa League or Champions League, it means that there is going to be the players, there is going to be the uh, the capacity there to fill the stadium out and to get a lot of money for that as well. Caballero made that goal for himself, really. Latched onto the back of the bad back pass. And outside of the boot, right in the top corner, past the keeper. That's your keeper. So we are 1-0 up, and that's the wrong team. Why have we got Olympic on there? We should have um, Europa point stats. I don't know why that's long up for. Evans, ball forward to Bustamante. That's, a part, that's a, something we could be saying for our new Gibraltar team soon. Baez. Cuts inside. Oh, I didn't get the finish though. Kaffir saved it. So I'm going to have to spend a bit of time over the next uh, few months, of course. After this episode, we probably won't see you until um, around about February or March uh, this season, which is going to be a, a jump of about four or five months. And in that time, I'll probably go through and I'll, I'll put together what I believe is the best players in Gibraltar. I might be wrong, but I'll put together what I believe is the best players in Gibraltar anyway. It's going to be tricky to uh, to learn all these brand new players, but Bustamante's in. It's coming back as far as Bayers though. Bayers back to Caballero, the goal scorer. Back to JJ. Plays it out wide. Saw the run of Riley. Riley now ball in. Bustamante can't quite get there. And Enrique clears it out. Bustamante tried to pick it up, but that's the end of the highlight. He was offside by the looks of it. So what else do we have then? Can we get another goal? before half time that's what we want to do we want to make sure that we're comfortable in all these games and Bustamante has latched onto it now to Caballero who lost it no he's kept hold of it plays out to Masadi Masadi bringing it forward slowly into Caballero Caballero out wide well back into the central as I say to Jack Evans to JJ Jack Evans Jack Evans is a wrestler that's Frank Evans JJ's gone down injured I think he's pulled a muscle and because of that, Olympique have managed to mount themselves a counter-attack now. But it was a poor pass there by, by them. And it's clear back out. And Bustamante is now on the attack himself. What's Bustamante got? Can he put it into the center? He does. It's kicked up by Masadi. And it is in the back of the net. Adama JJ has been injured. And we should substitute him as quickly as he Yeah, he's still down JJ. I think he's going to have to come off. He just dropped there with no one around him. It must be a pulled muscle, so I think the best bet is to bring him off. But Bustamante, great bit of work down that wing. He's our lone striker for this match, and he's out there on the wing putting the crosses in for us as well. So I think JJ's going to have to come off straight away. I don't want to risk injuring him, so Jason McDermott comes on. The young Irish player. Let's see what he's got in the locker. He's not had a lot of first-team football, Jason McDermott, since he came in. He was going to be the, uh, the successor for Serge Atundi, but since um, Atundi's gone and we brought quite a few good new players in, we've gone much more for um, we've gone much more narrow. We've got a lot more attacking central midfielders. So he's not had a lot of first-team football, really. Badger now has both hands on the ball. And that's the end of the highlight. We do have a highlight of our own though. Ashley Riley going to take the throw in to Caballero. Back to Masadi to Baez. Who puts it in the back of the net. Nice cheeky little goal there by Christian Baez. Getting himself another goal. He's done well so far. He's uh, complained a few weeks ago that he hadn't played in the first team football. Like I said earlier on. We were trying to save him for the Champions League games, but he doesn't always get into the Champions League team. So, uh, in certain occasions, he uh, he wasn't playing at all. So, that was the, the main problem we had. But, like I say, once the Champions League's finished, then we can start to... Uh, we can start to mix things up a bit. We can start to have stronger teams out in the league as well, and in the Cup. And we want to try and make sure, like I've been saying as well... We want to get through an entire season winning every single game. We haven't done that yet. We've done it once. No, in the last few seasons, we've had one game that were always uh, either drawn or lost. But this year, this is our year, I think. This is going to be our year. We've got a stronger team. 
We've lost a couple of big players, but we also brought a couple of really good players in. Goliath at the far post, headed in to McDermott. Oh, I could, oh, that's a great save that is by the keeper. We'll have to bear him in mind when we come to uh, when we come to uh, name our squad. I don't know how we go well we're going to do in the international market. As long as we, at the moment, Gibraltar are ranked 100. Wow, what a tackle. That was Jim Morrison. Well done, my friend. Well, that's him definitely called up. Yeah, at the moment, um, Gibraltar are ranked 193rd in the world, which is more or less bottom. So if we can sort of get that ranking up by, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, even 100 places, who knows, over the next few years, that's obviously going to be a massive progression. And that's sort of what I'm looking for, really. I just want to really just get them up the rankings. And I think we can do that, especially we're going to be lucky, like I said before. Um, Jim Morrison's just come into the squad. If we're going to have um, Bustamante, uh, Dulce as well, there's also um, a few other players we're going to have that are going to be uh, joining the international squad, which are really going to improve the squad by quite some time. And that's really going to help us out, I think, to... Uh, to look a little bit better than what the previous managers were. I think we were pretty better than the previous managers anyway. Some of these AI managers are awful. If you look at the the, the manager that was the favourite for this job for Gibraltar, the last episode we, we looked at him, it was like a manager from Leventon Spa was his last club. I'm like, why why would you be picking someone who's been the manager of Leventon Spa? We're obviously a much better contender. They gave us the job straight away. I don't know why they'd even offer it to us without us having to apply for it, but there you go. Just while I was paying attention and didn't uh, skip through some matches, isn't it, really? Bustamante, he's offside. Yeah, so I think we'll end up doing better than what the previous manager did anyway. But even if we can just, like, sneak a couple of sneaky draws here and there. Of course, they, they, you always get one or two easier teams that are in the group stages. So there's no reason why we couldn't sneak something here and there. I have left it to the assistant manager to arrange friendlies. Only because I'm not 100% sure when the game has got set international... Um, international break so I thought if I leave it to the assistant manager to book our friendly matches for us then it means that we will always have friendly matches in the right place because I, I would prefer to book the matches myself against other nations that I want to play against but at the same time like I said I don't know when um, we have the free time available so we'll just let it to the uh, assistants so a lot of a lot of us a real mess there for a second wasn't it a real mess there for a second Frank Evans back to Dulce. Dulce, big ball over the top, looking for his Argentinian teammate, Bustamante. Make a couple of substitutions. Let's bring on Aritz, maybe? Let's bring on Aritz for Bust. No, let's leave Bustamante on, actually, because he needs his match fitness, doesn't he? Um, Susicon for Riley. And Taylor Fry for Bayers, because Bayers might end up playing in that Champions League game against Valencia, mightn't he? And that's the interesting thing now, if you think that against Valencia, or against Bayern Munich we pulled off a draw, and um, against Valencia, we, did we pull off a draw against Valencia as well? I think we did get a draw against Valencia at home. So if we've done that, then we might have to do the same thing again. We just want to get a slightly better result. If we can get a win against Valencia, that puts us into the Europa League group stages. Obviously, if we lose, then we get nothing, but still, it was nice being there. And, of course, we can try and do it all again next season. That's going to be the main thing now. We just want to try and get... The, if we can get in the Champions League every single year, because we're going to get about uh, £10 million every time we get into the Champions League group stages now. Looks like it's going to be a simple win for us now. We're 3-0 up. We've got this free kick. Dulce to Morrison at the far post. That's great save. Was that a save or did it hit the post? I can't really tell. Good tackle by Masadi. Wow, playing the defensive role there from that free kick. Great tackle, but it's back onto Olympic on the counter-attack. Bradford's there. Oh, a good tackle there by Gallardo. Bustamante. It's taken out there by Sevilla. It's not a, a S S Saliva, was that? Is it Saliva? Got no idea what his name was. But it looks like a 3-0 win is going to be the result for us, which is pretty good. Oh, maybe not. There's another highlight. McDermott 
to Caballero. Back to Masadi. Back to Caballero. Out wide to Susikin. Takes his time, sees a great ball into Bustamante. What a cross and what a header there. Susikin and Bustamante linking up fantastically well. Oh, what a goal that was. I'm really happy with that goal. And that's the sort of man, Bustamante. Look at him on the uh, on the shoulder of the, the last man there. Gets himself in the space and heads it into the back of the net. That is the sort of man that we need in our national side. And that is going to happen. In less than a year's time, Bustamante will be in the national side, as will Ho, uh, Juan Carlos Dulce as well. So, yeah, we've been very happy with that. A 4-0 victory against Olympique, which confirms us at the top of the table. We have a game in hand over second place as well. Everyone else is really struggling, actually. Lincoln's close-ish. There'll be six points behind if we win our game in hand. But everyone else is a real distance away. It's a very tight league. Look at that. 9-5 to five is uh, third place to 10th. It's really tight at the moment, isn't it? It could be anyone getting the extra Champions League and Europa League spot. But let's get into that game now against Valencia and see if we may be able to sneak our way into the Europa League. And here we go. We are big, big underdogs for this one. But as I said, if we could pull off a win here, we could be able to sneak our way into the Europa League knockout stage. I'm not expecting that to happen. Um, but still, we'll just put a good performance. That's the main thing, really. And team-wise, we've kept with the defensive side. We played against um, Real Madrid. Real Madrid by Munich, shall I say. I'm just looking at their team. Sorry, I got confused there. And they've got Jordan Shakiri, They've got Baba Raman. I think that's about it, really. And Tiago Maia. And now, team we've got, we've got Bruno Romito in goal. Who hopefully I'll be able to get up into the national side pretty quickly. Jose Ramon Gallardo at left back. Jared Madison's at centre back. Alongside Simplice McKendy. At right back, we have Fidel Munoz. The two defensive midfield spots, we do have Obef Patino. And he is playing alongside Anders Broger. We have at left midfield, Christian Atagania. Central midfield, we've got Nataliano, Natalio Caballero. That's the words I'm looking for. At right midfield, we have Roberto Otero. And then up front on his home, we have Christian Baez. Now, we also have on the bench, this guy right here. A guy called Carl Potts, who I think is going to be the next big thing for the national side. So I wanted to sort of leave him on the bench. And if we get an opportunity to bring him on and give him a little bit of a run out, we'll do so. Just to uh, help ourselves out with the national side as well. So that is the team. Let's get straight into the match. See how we get on. See if we can pull off a... Uh, I, I pressed the complete wrong one now. I was, I keep doing that. When I'm talking, I keep going, yeah, I expect to win. And I don't realise that what I should be doing is... What I should be doing is... Um, is obviously same with the underdogs and that sort of stuff. But Right, so I've got standard flexible on the go at the moment. I'm thinking standard structure is the best way to go. Shakiri now with a free kick. Teddy clear by McKendy back to Shakiri. I'm hoping there's not too much noise in the background. I am... Um, Making my dinner while recording this. And I think my my rice is boiling over at the moment. But I'm not bothered. This is my... Oh, I've scored caustic. This is my main um, thing I'm keeping attention on now. If my rice is boiling over, it's boiling over. Who cares? Oh, it was offside. That's alright. My rice is fine. Come on. If we could sneak a win here, it'd be amazing. It'd be a great way to... Uh, uh, the guy who scored the goal has now got off injured. Um, it'd be a great way to really, great way to really finish episode 100 with a bang. Castiles, goal kick forward, headed back towards him by Munoz though. Patino, I don't know how we, if we're getting on top of this one or not at the moment. <laughs> we seem to be throwing our bodies at every single thing. That's probably why we're struggling at the moment. With um, I, I mentioned this a couple of episodes ago. We just seem to be giving away loads and loads and loads of fouls in European games. And it's um, something that's holding us back a little bit, I think. And it may be just because we're trying to throw ourselves in front of everything to try and block it all off. Romito's big ball forward. Problem is, Bayez has got not really much support up there. So if the ball does come up to him, he doesn't really have a lot he can do with it. 
he can try and take it forward and score a goal himself, but he needs to wait for other people to, to come up there and join him. He's probably better off when people like Atero and that get the ball and bring it up and he can just stand in the box and wait for the shot, I suppose. Salvador to Said. Who's in? Great save by Romito. I, did, I have tried to bring Romito into the national squad, but apparently I can't because he's already in the Australian national squad. So as soon as he's dropped out of the Australian national squad, hopefully he doesn't get a cap in that time, then uh, we'll bring him straight in and we'll give him our first cap. So he'll be locked into Gibraltar then for the rest of his career. Even if he leaves us, which is a possibility, I think he's unhappy at the moment. Um, if he does leave us, then, um, then we can give him that cap. I think he's unhappy. He doesn't like me, I think it is. Because I left him out of the Champions League opening round squad because he was injured and he got annoyed with me because of that and I still more you 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 weren't available you were injured and um apparently that wasn't a good enough response and now he wants to leave so hopefully I can try and turn him around if I keep him happy enough I think I'm gonna have to just check my rice for one second I'll be back in a second Right, that should fix it now, hopefully. There was some water underneath the pan, it was just popping and banging all the time. Maybe it's, uh, if there was any background noise, you can't hear it now anyway, hopefully. They'll probably start again in a couple of seconds, you watch. So, what can we do now then? We're 1 0 down. Can we, um. Can we get an equaliser? That's the question. We need to get two goals we want to get into the Europa League. Oh, Otero, we've got a free kick. It was a short free. I was hoping Otero might knock that ball in, but there you go. Caballero, no, it's lost. It's a shame. It, every time it looks like we're going to get something out of this, every time it looks like we're going to get a highlight of something, it seems to always be um, just a counter-attack. Great work there by Gallardo. Great tackle. And Atagania gets the ball back to Gallardo, who now plays the big ball forward. But it's only gone as far as Peña, who brings it back to Danilo. To Saeed. Sa Saad. I can't know how to pronounce that one. I thought I'd pronounce it as sad. Proper. Good old pro They've got proper and they've got basic. They've got a proper basic team they have. So I think we're... I don't know. It looks like we're going to be not doing well in this one. We did get the draw at, uh, at home against them. We got the draw against Bayern Munich at home as well. So we've done quite well again this year's Champions League. Um, but... We're still going to finish bottom of the group, which is what we did last time. I think we got three points last time, then we finished bottom of the group. This time we've only got two, but I think this time our group's been a lot more difficult. By Munich, PSG and Valencia. It wasn't exactly a group made in heaven, was it really? I remember when, when, we, when we were watching the group stages um, being drawn, I remember thinking to myself, I think I said it out loud. I think I said, wow, look at Group D. I, I hope to God we're not in there. I was, I was laughing, thinking whoever gets in there is going to be absolutely destroyed. And then all of a sudden it was us. I was like, oh no. Because of course PSG are the current um, champions of Europe. They won the uh, Champions League last season. Bayern Munich are of course Bayern Munich, a cracking team. And it was all down to just, uh, it was just us and Valencia left. And Valencia are of course a very strong team as well. They've had a few issues in the last few years in real life, Valencia. They're not um, at the same point they were before. But oh yeah, yeah Munoz with a corner. And again, every time it looks like we're going to get something, it's just a counter-attack. Or is it? Go on, hit it, Baez. Oh, he's put it straight at the keeper. Oh, if you put that in the corner, you would have scored a goal then, Baez. But he put it straight at the keeper. When you get these opportunities, you've got to take them. That could have been the difference between us getting a draw and getting a loss. I don't know if we're going to get any more opportunities in this game. Corner kick to be taken by Shakiri. It's going to come out to Amate. Plays it across to Ordonez. To Peña. Back out to Tele. Or Tete, should I say that is. There's a proper cross into basic. A proper cross and a basic header. But it was saved by Romito. Come on, Romito. Just get yourself out of the Australia squad and let me call you up for the Gibraltar squad. That's what we want to happen. You're such a big part of our Gibraltar squad as well. And just like Jim Morrison, because Jim Morrison's wanted by a lot of clubs as well, but I think Jim's actually happy staying with us at the moment. He's not getting a lot of first-team football, but he is getting a few games here and there 
And he seems to be happy with that. So, uh, although Romito is a man who does want to leave. And if he does leave, then as long as he's got a cap for Gibraltar, I'm okay with that. Because we do have other goalkeepers. Obviously, I'd like to keep a hold of Romito. I don't really want to lose him. But maybe if we call Romito up for the national side, all of a sudden he'll start, li he'll start to like us again. That's a possibility. You never know. Ball across to Baba. To Pena. Oh, McKendie's giving away the penalty. McKendie, the man who's got 19 tackling, missed times a tackle. <laughs> and giving away the penalty. And that could be not good for us. <clears throat> My voice is starting to go now. This is a very big moment. If this penalty goes in, that is the end of this year's Champions League campaign. Or well, it's in the Champions League campaign anyway, but the end of the Europa League campaign as well. Amate. Ramita, oh Ramita, I thought you had that. I thought you had that. You went the right way and I thought you had it. But there we go. There is the second goal for Valencia. I thought he had it. Look, he went the right way. And it just went right underneath his body. It's a shame that. It's a shame. But still, 2-0 down. Let's make some substitutions. Let's uh, change things up. I tell you what, we're out anyway. Let's let's we're out anyway. Let's do some strange stuff. Like, like Lucas Heichel is a player I don't think he's ever played for us before, and he is Gibraltarian now as well because he's been with the club for so long. So let's give him a game. Let's bring him on in place of Madison, and then we'll swap him with Patinho. So Patinho can go back at centre back, and let's bring on Karl Potts. Why not? Why the hell not? And Frederick Nald. Um, let's bring him on in place of Ataganyu. He's not had a very good game. Let's make all three of our substitutes. I don't think we're going to come back into this game anyway, so we might as well just uh, give some uh, give some guys some first team football. Let the likes of Lucas Hyakul and uh, Karl Potts see exactly what it's like to play in the first team. See, instantly from getting that Gibraltar job, instantly my full attention now has gone on to try and get in players to take Gibraltarian nationality as well. Of course, I'm going to be using a lot of the actual Gibraltarian players, but at the moment, because of the way the game's set up, it's impossible to get players above a certain level by the looks of it. So, Because um, we, we've actually got, according to our um, information screen, we've got the best um, youth facilities and best youth scouting that we can possibly get. And it doesn't seem to make much of a difference because of it. I think it's a hidden um, value within the nation that this allows players of a certain quality being created. There we go, 2-0 loss. It wasn't an embarrassing result. That's the main thing. 2-0 loss is not bad at all. Um, so we're going to say calmly. Um, unlucky boys, it wasn't our night. Keeps everyone happy. Keeps everyone relaxed. Um, we have finished bottom of our group on two points. Which is not bad. If you look at our group, PSG, Bayern and Valencia. If you look at our group, we would expect it to be finishing bottom by a lot more than two points. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with our whole um, Champions League um, little escapade for this season. It's been pretty good. So when am I going to bring you back next? I think I'll probably bring you back around about... I'll probably bring you back for the youth intake. Because uh, then we'll be able to look at all the players with uh, in and out in January. And of course our youth intake as well. And hopefully by then our new stadium will have been completed as well. Or the new stand will be completed. And we can have a look at that as well. And uh, we might even have a uh, an international friendly book. Who knows? But of course, as always, if you have enjoyed this episode, then please do hit that like button. It does really help me out. And also hit the like button because it's episode number 100. I never thought I'd get this far in any of my series. And uh, I'm so happy that it has been this one because I'm really enjoying this. So let me know um, your continued support by hitting that like button on episode 100. And of course, if you are new around here and you've enjoyed what you've seen, then hit the old subscribe button. And then, of course, go back in the playlist and start from episode number one. Why not watch the entire run of how... We've come from a second division Gibraltarian club to a team in the group stages of the Champions League. It's really been such an improvement over the last 15, 20 years. It's really worth a bit of fun watch. Of course, um, of course, I'll bring you back uh, for the uh, youth intake, like I said. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. I've been Chevy Gamer. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in a few days time for our next episode of the Gibraltar Challenge.